How are you guys doing? Good, good afternoon. Good Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Today's stream is going to be about an $8.7 million verdict DHL just lost, could be appealed for racial bias. And then we also talk about trucking companies are losing loads and they're losing, well, they're losing loads because the illegal drivers are taking over the loads, taking over the business, especially down in some of the, the southwestern states. So let's get, let's get after it. Let's start with that. Let's uh, start with this first. I'm going to put this up on the screen. I'm going to put it up full. We'll start with the illegals. <laughs> Trucking companies right now. Trucking companies right now, by the way, if you're here now or later, please walk over and smash that like button. Is it on public or is it on? I'm checking, I'm checking. Give us one second. Let's make sure it's public. Yep, it's public. It's public. We're going to press. We're going to press on this. You want to uh, pull that, that, that up, pretty girl? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to scroll down as you read. Okay. Yes, the. Uh, oh, you're you're still pulling it up, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm All right. Sorry, just. Well, here's the gig. Here's the gig. There's actually an, an owner, a company owner. Up mm -hmm. oh, the next one. There's actually a company owner that's talking about this on freight waves. Mm -hmm. U.S. carriers. Let me go ahead and read it. Of a Mexico-based B-1 visa drivers create unjust but significant savings to U.S. carriers that are set up outsourced to B-1 drivers at fleets with lower cost. This is right off of freight waves, right? This is, let me, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me make sure this is public. It, it shows public. It shows public. This is right off of freight waves. And as you read through this article, the owner of a small South Texas trucking company said he's fighting to survive against other carriers who misuse the Mexico-based B-1 visa driver option. Okay. Reed, who's been named, you want to start there? Yeah, Reed, whose name has been changed for the story. He spoke to Freight Waves on the condition of an anonymity uh, of fear of retribution. As Freight Waves reported in... Um, Several news stories, trucking and transportation operators in the U.S. and Mexico have been violating cabotage. Is that how you say it? Cabotage rules? Hold on. Oh, cabotage. Yeah, yeah cab cabotage rules by yep, misusing foreign B-1 visas for drivers that deliver goods within the U.S. Uh, cabotage rules prevent foreign nationals in the U.S. on B-1 visas for, from competing with U.S. truck drivers on loads moving point to point in the U.S. The regulations are meant to protect driver jobs in the U.S. trucking industry. Let me keep on going. Well, as you go down this, and I've got the articles pinned in the description of the video. As you go down the, the article, you know, this is not, if, if this proceeds and this keeps going and people aren't arrested, people aren't, you know, removed from this, this type of situation, it's just going to happen more and more and more all over the U.S. Well, can I add, I, I, yes. I'm under the impression, because I've actually had one of these a long, long time ago, that a B-1 visa has a different categories, but you can actually like visit on a B-1 visa while you're doing business, but not necessarily working for a U.S. company and getting paid in the U.S. So it allows like international people traveling. When they travel, they're here for like a longer time than just a tourist. And it allows them to uh, do business, but they're not technically working in the U.S., getting a wage from the U.S. And so this is kind of a little bit of a, it's not a loophole, but they're kind of using those these visas exponentially uh, to get things done. No, and it's so a loophole. It's a, it is a loophole. You're trying to be polite. I get it. Well, yeah, it is a loophole, but it's not quite legal loophole if you're doing that. And anyway, but yeah, that's that's how B1 visa is only from experience because I've had one of those ones before. Well, it's just this. Mm -hmm. It's no different than what we're seeing on the college campuses right now. No different than that. You're seeing the government 
mm-hmm. that's supposed to take your tax dollars, my tax dollars, and spend them that benefits us. You're seeing so much right now across the U.S. that does not benefit any United States citizen. With all the billions that are being sent out, all the things going on on college campuses, those college campuses where you're watching on the news, the protests, they get billions of dollars from the government for federal aid. And they're letting this happen. And the last time I checked, if you look look over line, look at look look online, they're not coming here. These folks are not coming here to integrate with the U.S. You can go into some of the socials in in London and see that these folks that are getting elected to office over there that are from the Middle East, they're saying right on camera with zero fear of retribution you're going to be a Sharia law state by 2050. We're gonna own all of this and you're gonna be under our rule because you we cannot be under anybody's rule. That same mindset is what you see on the news now with everything going on. It's the exact same mindset. This is getting to the point, it's gotten to the point where people still don't wanna believe it. Like you don't want to believe what you're seeing is exactly what's being allowed. And you don't want to believe what you're seeing is as bad as it is. So let's get off of that. Again, that link is in the description of the video. Let's get to this next one. This next one, DHL. And I understand why they did it. I'm kind of curious what some of you you guys think. DHL, trucking company DHL (laughs) with the big with the big yellow trucks. They, they got sued, and the suit right now has been won by the, uh, by the plaintiffs saying that DHL put black drivers on more black neighborhood routes and white drivers on more white neighborhood routes. Okay, let me put this up. Let me make sure you can see this. You might not. I might not have had it up for you to see. There you go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So DHL just lost this lawsuit. Don't know if it's going to go to appeal. There's the trucks right there. DACAB. $8.7 million or a race discrimination lawsuit. You want to read that? Yeah. Um, has been bought against uh, for equal employment. That's okay. It just That's okay. Well, let me, let me jump in from there. Okay. 83 black employees. And they, they, they tell you why. This is what's crazy to me because I, I will say if I had to take a delivery job and you had to send me into cities like downtown Chicago, downtown Memphis, downtown Baltimore, and I was a white driver, I wouldn't want to do those routes. And mm-hmm. I would probably, if I had no choice, I would probably leave. I would probably leave the company and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And again, the links to this is in the description of the video. I don't know that I would want to do those routes. I don't care what they pay. I don't want to be down there at any time of the day. Most of these blue cities are not friendly towards anybody who's not them, period. And I don't know that I'd want to be down there. So I understand the logic of the of the senior management, but about 83, 85 drivers got together and said, you know what? No, no, we don't want to... Uh, we don't think that's fair. We want to go on. We don't. We want to go into cleaner, nicer, safer neighborhoods ourselves. And I get that. Who wouldn't? You know. I get that. I yeah. get that completely. Yeah. So DHL and all these other companies are going to have a problem, and they might end up losing drivers because here's the thing. And I had a lot of property. I've told you guys this mm-hmm. uh, in Norfolk, Portsmouth, uh, and some of the rougher areas of Virginia Beach when I was living there on the oceanfront. But our rental properties were scattered around. And I had some property that was in a little bit, one property in a little bit rougher area of Charlotte. I could see illegals wanting to go run those routes. But when you think about the reality of that, the illegals or the newcomers that might take those jobs, like the first article we talked about, even when they come in one of the neighborhoods like that and set up a store, what do they do? They put bars up, they have weapons with them, they have security cameras, 
they don't really want to be there, but it's a place they can go buy a place and afford to buy a place and operate it. But every one of them would rather not be there, you know, and they're providing a service. This DHL lawsuit to me, when I read through this lawsuit, I get completely, completely why. Well, they, they just, they, uh, send certain people. Well, I can read it if you want. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, 83 black employees. They said in this case, uh, they, in this case, they made no claim that black workers were paid less or denied promotions, but they were, I'll just rephrase it because I remember reading it. Yeah. They're going to send certain uh, black employees into certain areas, white people into certain areas. And, and that was one of the biggest problems, although this is Illinois. So I wonder if they're like in places like the middle of Chicago uh, and stuff like that. The company also. Oh, hold on. No, no, it's all good. But that, that was pretty much the, the the lowdown of this whole article is that they're getting together for right reasons. They, they, they shouldn't be. Well, here's their thing. Black employees that were running those routes were subject and often witnessed or were targeted for crimes. Yeah. I get that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get that. But again, if I, if I had a choice, if they were telling me, listen, you got to run these routes or you can't work here, I probably wouldn't work there. Mm -hmm, I'm not mm -hmm. going to go into some of those cities. I would never go into, into Memphis willingly for any, for any reason. I wouldn't go into Baltimore willingly for any reason, especially in some of the downtown neighborhoods. I wouldn't want to go into some of these places and some, I wouldn't want to go into, into Compton. I wouldn't want to go into uh, some of the, the, the parts of LA. I wouldn't want to go into some of those places just because I know that it's not going to be a good situation. Mm -hmm. with all the crime and now you got the police being defunded on top of that and they're cutting programs to make room for the newcomers in the budget i just don't know that i'd want to be messing with that so both of these articles are pinned in the description of the video well like we were in illinois and across the river was st louis and we knew like even i as an immigrant who didn't know much about america knew don't go into east st louis or if you do, you're driving to one place to the next, but you're not going to get out and walk around to East St. Louis. Like, no way. Not as a as a single female plus a single white female. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. I can't say that I don't understand what DHL was doing. I get the logic, but at the same time, it's not right. You know. But it also, like, you're going to have a tough time then. You're going to mm -hmm. have a tough time. All these companies, if there's a little bit of a shade of that happening right now with these companies, which I would imagine there is. Mm -hmm. And then the 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 people don't want to go run those neighborhoods no matter what complexion you are that's going to be a problem for truck driving companies unless they go get some of these illegals some of these newcomers and have them run it's going to be a problem that's the stream man two two pieces of news i just found that dhl's in a they're in a tough position mm -hmm. because there's so many areas now that are not people friendly if you're not the same complexion as that neighborhood so many like they act like it's like the, like america's safe it's not there's there's places that you can't go if you're not a and it's no different than a black person going to some of the white neighborhoods so i'm not this is not racial at all in the sense of that specific thing or in the uk we had a lot of newcomers that were a particular group and there was a group uh, a religious group that's there that you don't you don't walk into that neighborhood otherwise you you'll end up not here you they know? called them no-go zones they're yeah they're called no-go zones and for the regular typical british person with a british complexion should and it's not about race it was actually uh, more uh, sharia law and stuff a, and you can't religious. just walk in if you're not part of that sect that part of that religion part of that law and you were protected otherwise so you just don't go and there was neighborhoods complete like loads of neighborhoods and they still exist today that you don't it's a no-go situation you do not go into the area so these kind of situations with trucking companies losing loads to the newcomers coming across the border and trucking companies having to decide who to send into what really bad cities, it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse. You see that, you see that. You see that the government has allowed what's happened to happen. You see that. Mm -hmm. Is there a solution? I, I don't even I don't even know putting somebody else at the, at the head of America is gonna make a difference because that person's gonna be battling everybody in government. Mm -hmm. You know, right now he's just battling the press and the judges, but battling everybody. 
gotten crazy. That's the stream for a Sunday afternoon. Um, please subscribe, like, comment, share the videos. Hit a like while you're while you're sitting here watching now. Appreciate that. And uh, you want to say goodbye in Chinese? Yes. Uh, goodbye. Zai Jian. God bless you. Jufu Niman. And good evening, one on. <laughs> you guys will be good.